Hi, I'm Jessica Val, swimmer of the Sant Andreas Swimming Club and of the Spanish national swimming team. And this will be my sixth year of swimming at a professional level. But I have been practicing this sport since I was six years old. I was an Olympic athlete in Rio. Now I will be an Olympic athlete again in Tokyo. And my daily life is complicated. It's difficult to combine everything. But usually I get up at 5 a.m., have breakfast, and at 6 a.m. we're in the water here at the Sant Andreo Swimming Club. I train from 6 to 8 in the morning, more or less, 8.30. Then we usually do some cardio work, go for a run until 9, 9.30. I have breakfast. I worked for a while, but now I dedicate myself to other aspects like all the invisible training. Recovery, physiotherapy, nutrition, psychologist. Then at at 1 to 1.30 I eat and at 2.45, more or less, I'm back in the water. And from that moment, there's no end. The coach tells us that there is no time to finish the training. But usually I finish around 5 or 5.30. Then I do physical training from 5.30 to 6.30 or 7.00 in which I train in the gym, strength resistance work, and also some days, well, contrast work, stretching. So it's long planning that lasts all day. And also weekly, we do like two micro cycles. We train from Monday to Wednesday, which is like an adaptation period. And then from Thursday to Saturday, and usually on Sunday we rest. Although when we go into the concentration phase, we also train on Sunday. Usually I train about eight hours a day, divided between morning and afternoon. In the morning, I train from six to eight in the water. Then I do cardiovascular work out of the water. And in the afternoon, we train from 2.30 to 5.30, again in the water. And then a physical part in the gym, which can be weights or strength resistance. I'm preparing for the Olympic Games, which is the competition. It's like a planning that has to last four years. It's like a goal that you see in the long term, but eventually, in a short time, you're already there right? Mentally, it's like you have a focus, a focus on the day and time. But even so, you still have to have previous objectives to keep motivating yourself and to keep moving forward, right? So that it doesn't seem so far away. And at that level of physical preparation, it's true that, well, you do more aerobic work, more basic work in the first year, and as the years go by, you do more race work or competition-based work. But it's true that with the pandemic, the plans have changed a bit. In this last year with the pandemic, a lot of things have changed, apart from in daily life, going with the mask until the last moment before training. The training sessions have to, have to, are much tighter in the sense that the groups are smaller. We've had to split up the group on several occasions due to positive cases or direct contact. So the fact that the preparation is affected, the confinements for having had COVID, we've suffered from all of this. And at the competitive level, the competitions are much more limited. It is difficult to go out and compete because many countries decide that you have to quarantine on arrival. So often it's not convenient to go out and compete at an international level. And then your preparation will be affected. So we are competing at a national level and we really want to go out internationally, but it's costing us a lot. When when they gave us the news that the games had been cancelled, it was like an emotional shock, but by different emotions I was feeling. That year, I was pre-qualified to go to the Olympic Games. I was only missing the last step, which was to become Spanish champion. And I was in Sierra Nevada training when they made us come down, and I passed from training in Sierra Nevada for a race that would take me to the Games to being locked in the house the next day. And the shock of seeing that everything was being cancelled, the Spanish championship was cancelled, the European competitions were cancelled, 
But the Olympic Games continued. The IOC continued without saying anything. It was like a feeling that they took away my pool, they took away my competitions. I have to keep training. I have a sense of responsibility because I'm training for this and I see that they're not going to cancel it and I'm here without a pool. So it was an overwhelming feeling. But yeah, then when they said they were cancelled, even beyond the Olympics, there are plans. So I really wanted to become a mum. And of course, all of that meant I have to postpone it another year. I've been thinking about this moment for four years and I have to extend it for another year. So it was a relief, but at the same time, knowing that you had to adapt to something different. And the truth is that I took it better than I expected, thanks to the work with the psychologist and the coach, who really understood my situation and made me see that everyone was really going through it and that you had to adapt and decide. I think these games will be special because everyone will have their own story. There's not, there's not going to be one person or one athlete with a similar story. Everyone will have been affected in a certain way. So I think they will be special for that reason. Because, because everyone will have experienced it in a certain way and everyone will have a story to tell when it's over. The worst moment in my sporting career was in 2019 because I was going through an emotional breakdown on a personal level, which ended up affecting at a work level, right? At a performance level. And I remember it was like, I felt like I was struggling all day. And when the competition came, which was when I had to struggle, it was like, I struggled too much, right? And I wanted to have fun and not, well, not push myself to the maximum. When, when it happened to me, I was like, I felt frustrated every time they pushed me to give my best because I wasn't able to give my 100%. It was something that I really worked on a lot during 2019, at the end of 2019. And I can tell you for sure that it's like there's a moment when your head makes a click. Of course, you go through it, but there's a day when you wake up and you say, that's it, I'm done, I'm done fighting. And when I have to fight, it's in my day to day at the level of training, but also in giving my all when it comes to competing. I think that's also made me appreciate now when I achieve results, because I know where I'm coming from. And sometimes you lose a bit of perspective when you get into the wheel of, well, of self demand, of wanting more, demanding more. Sometimes you have to get out a little bit and see where you came from and value it. I think that the role of women has changed on a social level and we, the women, have our professional careers, but we also want to be mothers, just like fathers. But it's true that it takes nine months and we go through a physical change for that. So we have to plan now when we can be mothers knowing that it is something difficult to do, you don't know exactly when you are going to be able to do it. But I think we need more help at the level of, at a work level, huh? but also at the level of sport. I think there are few athletes who, after being a mother, can reach the highest performances. I think there are also few models and the fact that there are few models means that you don't even think about it and you say either I'm a mother or I'm an athlete, right? I would like to be a mother and go back to swimming, but I don't know if I will be able to do it because often I'm away from home for many weeks. 
I don't know if I will have help to bring my baby, if I can bring someone to take care of my baby while I train. I think these are new problems that we women are facing now. And yes, there is a willingness or predisposition to solve them, but I think we have to raise our voices and at least say what problems we are encountering. For example, now I have to plan when to become a mother, but an athlete who is a man doesn't. Some of them have become fathers this Olympic year and nothing has changed for them, right? But me? I undergo a physical change, so I have to. I have to plan for it. But it's true that regarding this, there is an athlete, Ona Carbonell, who is trying right now, and she is a great model to me. If she is able to do it, I will also try. I don't have great models, but I could say one name, which is Rafa Nadal, for all the time he has been at the top. I think it's difficult to get to the top, but more difficult is to stay there. So I think that in that sense, he is a great reference for Spanish sports and for world sports. And in the case of swimming, there is a swimmer, Katinka Hozu, who has changed the vision of swimming a little bit. She is trying to professionalize it, which is difficult for swimmers. And we don't, at the moment, we don't, we don't have that. And in that sense, I think she has opened up many paths. And that's why she is a great reference point. If I think about, well, all the seasons that have gone by, perhaps the biggest success I have achieved was in 2015 with the bronze medal in Kazan. But I think in the end, all, in all the seasons, I achieved something or some goal that I'd set for myself, right? In this case, well, Kazan getting the medal, it was in 2015. In 2016, well, getting to swim my first Olympic Games. In 2017, I was able to make two finals in a world championship, both in the 100 and 200 breaststroke, which I'd never achieved before. In 2017, I was the European champion. So I think I didn't have one great season, but I think that something that defines me is to be constant and have, well, not great successes, but few and continuous ones. I really like the Indiba treatments because they combine the therapy, well, the massage that my physiotherapist can give me in the morning with, above all, what I notice is when there's heat, you know, and that feeling of relaxation, of well-being. And I really leave here feeling renewed. Well, in terms of sport, swimming is a discipline where the impact is minimal, if any at all. What we have are repetitive injuries, in this case, to the shoulder. We're talking about athletes who usually do about 8,000 strokes a day. So, of course, there are pathological processes where there is repetition, friction, liquid. And, in Jesse's personal case, the last injury we had was a knee problem. A mix between the dry sport, which she does to prepare herself, like running and so on, and her discipline, which is breaststroke also means that there are times when the knee is more involved. Well, I personally think that physiotherapy really increases an athlete's performance, simply because it's like a way, as we say with Ruska, of making a pit stop. And it's like it gets me ready to continue training during the week, to be at my best the next day. In the end, it's not that it makes me faster, but it allows me to train better the next day and it allows me to prevent injuries and also to work better on my strength. But really, and really, it's something that I've understood over time with age, right? At first, I didn't give it so much importance. But now, more and more. Yes, in the end, I think that both are important in the prevention work as the treatment. Because you are not patients to whom we can say, well, now rest 24 to 48 hours. But the treatment is such that the same afternoon or the next day, you can come back to be again at your best. And so in the end, it is almost mandatory, no? To make a pit stop, no? Like you said, the role I have for the Olympic Games started in 2016, when Jessie finished the Games. Since then, we started preparing for her Tokyo Olympic Games. 
So we have been preparing for five years, and with a role that we worked every week, in every competition, and that has been my role for the moment. Whatever the swimmers need before the Games, I will be more than ready to help them. And if the Federation, with whom I have already worked, wants to count on me, it will always be a pleasure for me to accompany them. I, for me to accompany them. I think it's important, and many times it stays a little... It doesn't come to light. Many times, when you win a prize, when you get a good record, the athlete is the visible face, but behind, there are many people who help or who row in this sense. The coach is the one who coordinates or is the brain of all these professionals. But at the end, all these people are like, like they are behind or like they are competing just like you. So I would like them to be there and to be able to enjoy it at least.